Football Manager is well known for being the game where wonder kids are picked up on years before they make a breakthrough in real life football. We all call ourselves geniuses by saying we knew the player beforehand and it's great fun. But Football Manager doesn't always get it right. So today we're going to be playing a game of flop or not by going back a decade to FM13 to see how those players got on and whether they lived up to the hype. We don't usually do these kind of videos, but if you guys really enjoy it, let us know by hitting that like button and if it gets enough support support we will make a second part to it and in terms of which game we'll cover next time instead of FM13 we want you to make your suggestions in the comments down below to let us know which game you'd like to see next which wonder kids you'd like us to take a look at but with that being said subscribe if you haven't already and let's get in to our first few players and there's a lot to get through so we're gonna move through quick the highest rated goalkeeping wonder kid on FM13 was Mark Andre Testegen who at the time was out in the Bundesliga playing for Borussia Mönchengladbach back. He made that move to Barcelona and since then he's made the number one shirt his own at the club. He's obviously had Manuel Neuer to compete with on a national team front but this one was definitely a great prediction from FM. In terms of potential in that year's game there was one goalkeeper who had the same as him and it was Thibaut Courtois who at the time was bouncing between Atletico Madrid on loan and about to start his career at Chelsea where he did very well and ended up of course at Real Madrid. He's one of the best goalkeepers in the world and another one that FM then predicted well but all the way down on that goalkeeping wonder kid list not one of the best goalkeepers by any stretch was a young goalkeeper that you might well recognize and that was Jan Oblak who is a great goalkeeper of course but at the time he was out at Benfica getting some game time after that year he made a move to Atletico Madrid and he hasn't looked back since he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world and it's safe to say in terms of predicting goalkeepers FM got it right that year this one is going to make you laugh. When it comes to centre-backs, the second best centre-back in that year's Wonder Kid crop was Raphael Varane, who has of course gone on to be one of the best centre-backs in the world over the last decade or so. He's won the World Cup, a Champions League, and is very, very decorated when it comes to competition wins. But there was one player at his current club that was rated higher than him when it comes to defender Wonder Kids. Was it Harry Maguire? No. Who was it? Well, you might have guessed already, but it was actually Phil Jones. At the time, he was predicted to be the best defender under the age of 21 and he had more potential than any other centre-backs we're about to look at. Obviously it hasn't quite worked for him since Alex Ferguson left the club, lots of injuries and he will be leaving on a free deal at the end of this season. Outside of those two, there was also another two players that were predicted to be really high-level defenders. One was Kyriakos Papadopoulos, who at the time was playing out for Schalke. He then got a move to Leverkusen, bounced around the German divisions, has been to a few different clubs on a free, and now finds himself as a free agent. It certainly hasn't worked out for him, and considering he had a similar potential to Rafael Varane, they've had polar opposite careers. And the final Wonder Kid centre-back we'll look at was Steven Corker. He was the fourth best central defensive Wonder kid in FM13. He at the time was playing for Tottenham. He then got a move to Cardiff and to QPR, never really settled anywhere. And now he finds himself at Wigan out in the championship. Before we move on to the fullbacks, midfielders and attackers, I'd like to let you guys know I do have my own channel as well. Links in the description down below if you'd like to check that out. Over there, we have a Let's Play series going on with Aberdeen, some one-off rebuilds, which you guys seem to absolutely love, and also some YouTube shorts about Wonder Kids you might not have heard of. So if you want to come and check that out, any support would be massively massively appreciated but back to our list and to another player that I think is certainly a success and that was David Alaba who we all knew at the time despite having a lot of potential was already a great player the Austrian was at Bayern Munich in 2013 and had already played a few seasons for them doing pretty well since then he was a regular for Bayern played there for a number of years before moving on to Real Madrid certainly a success and one of the better predictions from that year for FM his competition when it came to fullback wonder kids on the left hand side at the time was Jetro Willems a Dutch player who was at PSV Eindhoven out in the area of Eze. And whilst he has got a handful of international caps and he's done well in terms of playing for the likes of Frankfurt and Newcastle, I don't really think he lived up to the hype of Alaba, but he's certainly had a decent career, now finds himself as a free agent in football manager and one that could actually be a decent pickup in your save. On the right hand side, the highest rated wonder kid was Danny Carvajal and I think this one is certainly a success. I don't know the full story behind this, but in 2013 he was at Real Madrid but had moved to Bayern, then back to Real. He was a big 
part of a Champions League success at Real still finds himself there. For how much longer, who knows, but he has certainly lived up to the hype. His competition at right back was Mattia De Scilio, who despite being at Juventus now, was a Milan player at the time. Plenty of appearances under his belt, international caps as well, 39 caps. And whilst he's never turned into that world-class amazing right back, he's been around for years, played for some top clubs and is still doing a job now. Now we're moving into the central midfield position, starting off with defensive midfielders. And this one's going to make you laugh. There was two players tied for having the most potential in that position. One was Marco Verratti. At the time, he'd just made his way into PSG's team after signing from Pescara in the Serie B. He's been a key player for them for years, a technically gifted midfielder, one that's very well thought of, and he's got plenty of appearances for Italy. He's lived up to the hype, but his counterpart, not so much. Obviously, we're talking about Newcastle legend, bold icon, John Joe Shelby, who ended up getting six appearances for England. I believe he was at Liverpool at the time. Maybe he had just joined Swansea, but either way, he's played a lot for Newcastle and was a big part of getting them back into the Premier League. But since then, his game time's dwindled out a little bit. And now in the Eddie Howe era, as Newcastle push on to greater height, Shelby has been shipped off to Forest, where hopefully he'll do a good job for them. I haven't seen him playing that much this season. Maybe it was because of his injury. I don't know. But he certainly hasn't lived up to the heights that Verratti has. And the other defensive midfielder who was highly rated in that year's game was Pedro. Pedro Obiang, who was at one point at West Ham, I'm pretty sure. Yes, he did sign for West Ham for four million from Sampdoria, and then they turned it around and actually made a profit, selling him to other Serie A sides, Sassuolo. Never really became world class, but played quite a lot in the Premier League, played a fair bit in the Serie A as well. A decent career, but not as good as the likes of Varane and Verratti that we've looked at so far. Don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying this, so we know to make more episodes on this. But now we're moving on to some more forward thinking midfielders. Firstly, we have Julian Draxler who at the time was playing for Schalke, one of the most promising talents in the world, moved for a huge fee at the time to Wolfsburg. From there, he then went to PSG for another pretty big fee. He was knocking around PSG, a little bit of a squad player, I believe, over the years. Game time started to dwindle out, and now he is out on loan at Benfica. Certainly didn't live up to the massive expectations that people had for him, but not a terrible career at all. Big transfer fees, playing for big clubs, plenty of international appearances. I wouldn't really say FM got the this one wrong, kind of in the middle with Draxler. His competition at the time was Bernard, the Brazilian wide player. At the time, he was playing for Atletico Mineiro and then moved on to join Shakhtar. He played there for a few years, came to Everton on a free. Now he finds himself in the Greek divisions for Panathinaikos. And I mean, he's a decent player, but he's never lived up to the hype really, has he? Going back to Pedro Obian quickly, I just want to mention he had a higher potential than both Casemiro and also Paul Pogba. So that just lets you know where some players were at in the FM rankings at the time. Eric Lamella was a real promising talent back in the day when he was out at Roma. He was signed in that famous transfer window from Tottenham after they sold Gareth Bale, I believe, where they splashed it on. Was it nine players or seven players? It never really worked out for him. I mean, he scored a few incredible, incredible goals for Spurs. He ended up leaving to join Sevilla where he's doing fine for them. He's got Argentinian caps and whilst it was never an amazing career, he was playing regular Premier League football for a good part of a decade outside of some injuries. I'd say this one is a bit hit and miss. He never really reached his full potential but he certainly didn't crash like some players did. But at that time, a lot of people in world football would have bet their house that Stefan El Shavari was going to go on to be one of the best players in world football. The skillful winger showed a lot of promise when he was at Milan, but it never really worked out. He ended up going over to Roma, then started playing in China. He's now back at Roma, even though I haven't got the name fix on at the minute. This is Roma. Maybe there's still a few special moments left in the tank for him. Mario Goetze is a very interesting one. Obviously, everyone knew he had tons of talent. He's had horrible, horrible injuries in his career. He's bounced between Dortmund, Bayern, back to Dortmund, then to PSV. Now he's playing for Frankfurt. But no matter what he did in his career, it wouldn't have mattered. This guy lived up to the potential by scoring scoring in that World Cup final. That cemented himself as a German icon and therefore I would say he's probably lived up to that potential. A true one club man, Ike Munayin was destined for big things back in 2013 and he's never really shot to stardom the way people thought he would. Instead, he's been a very consistent player for Athletic Bilbao out in the Spanish divisions, has never really let them down. He's the club captain and even though some people will say he didn't live up to the potential in the general footballing world, I think as far as any fans of his club go, he has definitely lived up to that potential, becoming a club legend over the years for his side. 
Now we're going into our final three players, some of which were massive successes, some of which not so much. The first one, Neymar, an illustrious player, a brilliant player, a mercurial player, one of Brazil's best ever. Even though some people think he didn't live up to the potential by going to PSG, no matter what, he's became one of Brazil's best players, one of the best players of the last decade by far. He was playing for Santos at the time and went on to form one of the most deadly front threes in world football, broke transfer records, and whatever you think of him, he's certainly had a bright career and has lived up to the potential way more than most players in this list. At the time though, he was sharing the stage with Lucas Ocampos. Now, football manager also thought he would have great potential the same way they did with Neymar, but for him, it never really worked out. He was at Monaco at the time, went out on loan to Marseille, did okay there, got a permanent move, but then was loaned out to Genoa, Milan, came back to Marseille, then to Sevilla, where you know what? He's had a pretty decent career, hasn't he? He's played for some big clubs, played fairly consistently, regular football, never really shot to stardom the way some players have, but he's been a handy player, got Argentinian caps as well, and for him, there is still some time in his career left to do something special. But our final player is Jordan Ayew, who many people joke have no idea how he's still a Premier League footballer at Crystal Palace. I believe he scored two at the weekend, but at the time he was at Marseille, looking very promising. He's been in and around the block in the Premier League, went to Aston Villa, he's been to Swansea. Look, he's never been world class. At the time, he was around the same ranking as someone like Romelu Lukaku, who's ended up winning Inter a Scudetto, became Belgium's all-time top goal scorer, I believe, and has played for the likes of Manchester United and Chelsea as well. Jordan Ayew probably hasn't hit those heights, mind you. Because of the potential he had, I think I'll put him on the flop side. But there you go. That was the best Wonder Kids of FM13 to see where they're at now. If you have enjoyed it, smash the like button for me. Let me know which game you want to see next in the comments down below. But most of all, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.